Hello, and I'm David Bell, and I want to talk to you about creating your best life. Today's session is about time. So how many people do not have enough time in their life to do the things that they want to do? Does work rule your life? Do you wish you had more time to do the things that you enjoy doing? Maybe spending more time with friends or family? or spending more time on that much rejected hobby or special interest. If today you were told you had 24 hours left to live, what three things would you do? The fact is we all have the same 24 hours each day. The question is, is what we do with those 24 hours? So here's the big idea. What time do you get up each morning? Do you get up at 7? Do you get up at 8? Maybe even later, 9 or even 10 o'clock. I'm sure if you have teenagers in your house, they may not get up to maybe later, midday or something like that. So, can you maybe get some time back in your life? Well, you can. If today you get up at 7, why not get up an hour earlier and rise at 6? If you do get up ultra early at 6 o'clock, maybe work to get up at 5 a.m. That one hour per day will become seven hours per week. Seven hours per week becomes 30 hours per month. And absolutely amazingly, that one hour per day, 30 hours per week, becomes 365 hours per year. That's the equivalent of 46 days on an average eight hour working day. And that calculates to be seven weeks of additional time that you can claw back by just getting up that one hour earlier every day. So what would you do if you now had seven weeks of additional time? So we've established that one hour per day, sleeping less, can actually equate to more. But we know sleep is important to the human body. But can we reduce the amount we sleep? Well, the answer is yes, we can. Most people think the human body requires eight to 10 hours sleep per night. The fact is, this is untrue. I find I can survive comfortably on five to six hours per night. Some people can survive on a lot less. And in the cases of Isaac, Newton, Michelangelo, they actually trained their body and their mind to, to actually work with a lot, lot less, two hours. Two hours working, two hours sleep, two hours working. And they found this is how they functioned at their best. So it's not about the quantity of sleep, it's about the quality of sleep. How many of you go to bed in the evenings, maybe after watching TV, playing the games on the Xbox or your PlayStation or an iPad, reading the news, maybe doing something which makes your brain more active? How many of you get into bed and then lay there and can't fall asleep. You find yourself counting the sheep or daydreaming about your day that's just happened or what's going to be potentially happen tomorrow. How many of you toss and turn throughout the night, waking several times in the early hours of the morning? What if you could go to bed at a reasonable time and then wake at a reasonable time, nice and early, that one hour earlier than you are each day, and function better? feel better, be mentally more alert. And this is where it goes back to the ability to have less sleep in a smaller amount of time, but have quality of sleep. So you ask me, how do I get this fantastic night's worth of sleep? There's a number of things that you can do here. And I'm gonna guide you through some of my steps that I found work for me. Not all of these, will necessarily be practical for you. You might take one thing away that would change the way you sleep, the way you perform, the way you are mentally, and the way you adapt to situations. So, what are these fantastic tips, you say? Well, here's a number of the things that I find work for me. Don't eat after half past seven at night. And if you do have to eat because maybe you're running late or you haven't had the opportunity to have your evening meal, have something light. Have a light snack. 
don't sit down to a three course meal. The reason is that when you eat, this sits in your body and then throughout the night your metabolism has to increase to actually burn um, the energy that's produced from this food. And because it's working very, very hard, this is what gives you this unstable sleep throughout the evening. Certainly cut down on the amount of red meat you eat. There's nothing wrong with having a great big steak or a nice joint of beef. But maybe reduce it, not every night if some people do. Maybe even bring it down to once a week. Again, red meat is very, very hard for the body to digest. And because it's hard to digest, it burns a lot of energy, again, while you're sleeping, to actually break it down. Before you go to bed, try reducing the, the, the amount of TV you watch. Um, if you are going to watch TV, try and stop watching it maybe half an hour before you actually do go to bed, especially if it's the news, anything that's going to make your brain very active and thinking about what you've just seen. Certainly refrain from taking modern technology to the bedroom. It's very easy these, these days to take your iPhone, your iPad, your Kindle, any device, even your laptop into the bedroom and sit there whilst in bed working away, maybe creating an email or reading your emails or social networking posting, etc. If you are going to do this, again, maybe try and stop doing that. Don't take it to the bedroom. Do it half an hour before you go to bed. If you're going to read a book in bed, fantastic, brilliant, gets the mind thinking and does relax you. But try to stop reading that book maybe 15 minutes before you decide that you want to go to sleep, just to let the mind calm down. Don't drink anything like coffee or alcohol before sleep. There's the old, you know, I'll have a quick whiskey before going to bed um, to relax me. And in fact, it does the opposite. You're actually better off keeping away from these types of substances, maybe having um, you know, things with low caffeine, so something like a fruit tea or a glass of water. Let, and have that maybe again, sort of 15, 20 minutes before you go to bed. Don't have it when you're actually in bed. Reducing the amount that you have before you go to bed will stop you waking up in the night uh, for those little uh, toilet visits. And it's all about building confidence when you go to bed as well. So when you do go to bed, you know, you're going to bed because you are tired. You're going to bed because you're ready to sleep. Not going to bed to lay there and think or review what's happened that day in your mind whilst laying there. So what's the best way to wake up in the morning? You want to get up this one hour extra earlier each day. Well, of course, the use of an o'clock clock is by far the most functional way of rising earlier. But during the summer months, it does become easier. The sunlight will come beaming through your windows. Maybe just leave the curtains slightly open if you're going to rise at, at sunlight. But set in your alarm clock is very important. If you want to get up at 6 o'clock, Set your alarm for 6 o'clock. Don't set it for 5.30 and then keep hitting that snooze button every 10 minutes, you know, up until that 6 o'clock when you do need to get up. I find actually something that works for me, if I want to rise at 6, I will set it on the odd minute. So I actually set it for 5.57. And when the alarm goes off, I'm actually up 3 minutes earlier than I want to be, but it makes me actually look at the clock to see what the actual time is. And then make the point of getting out of the bed. Your brain will be saying, oh, just five more minutes, just five more minutes. Combat that, push your feet out, and actually get up. And once you're up, you'll find you'll wake up very, very quickly. So there's a couple of very small points about making your sleep better in the evening. So following on from waking up one hour each morning, getting a better night's sleep, that quality, not the quantity, and then several tips to help you sleep better at night. I want to share with you some further great tips to success. So when waking up each morning, don't grab your phone, whether it be an iPhone or a Blackberry, any type of smartphone, don't grab that tablet or that laptop, don't start surfing the internet, looking at your emails, your Facebook postings, your Twitter postings. Leave that at least 30 minutes to an hour, at least. And if you can, maybe a couple of hours till you actually reach the office. The problem is, with any of this type of news and media, what we take in and absorb in the morning, it could be of a negative stance and it will put us on the wrong foot. It will give us a negative mind to start our day. And that's not what we want. We want to start the day with a positive attitude. When we walk out the door, we want to be thinking positive of all the good stuff that's going to happen that day. So... 
like the news, if you're putting the TV on in the morning and you're watching the news, the media tends to breed negativity about what's happening in our life. So try again, refrain from watching that. The weather, you know, if we wake up, we see it's going to be snowing or it's going to be windy or wet, we kind of leave the house feeling a little bit down. We want to be positive and walk out that door with a bounce. Start your day with a healthy diet. I like to call it the elite diet. And this is not about trying to lose weight or you know, function exactly as an athlete would. It's about controlling and actually adapting your lifestyle to a good, quality, healthy diet. To drink plenty of water, we hear this all the time, but around about two litres of water a day. Start your morning maybe with a fresh fruit smoothie. I have a fresh blender which I put all my fruit in in the morning. I actually create and make my own smoothies. But the likes of Innocent and stuff like that do some very, very good smoothies. And they're still very good for you. A small glass of that each morning will start your day again with that positive feel. Start with maybe some fresh fruits. Some good cereal, a muesli, a porridge or oats or something like that. Once you actually get to work and you're doing your job, have a mid-morning snack. Take five minutes. Have some fruit, some nuts, some seeds. Something just to break up the morning, just to take away that hunger. That should see you through to lunchtime. And that lunchtime uh, snack, you want to have a bagel with a salad or some soup or some fish or some chicken. But again, keeping it quite light, but trying to make it as filling as possible. Again, an afternoon sack, snack halfway through the day, again, of some nuts or, or a piece of fruit. And that evening meal, the most important meal of our day, is actually, again, having it before that 7.30 cut-off time. Sit down at a table. Don't have it on your lap. Have white meat. Have fish. Have things that are healthy. But it doesn't mean you can't have other things outside of that. It's all about balance, and it's creating a balance. If you're going to eat unhealthily every day then you'll become unhealthy because you are what you eat and try fasting for one day a week try just that once a week and if you can't do once a week maybe once a month where you actually have fruit and water only so you do get to eat but you're just reducing the amount you eat and you're replacing it with fruit which will you know comfort your hunger um, but certainly be good for you it's going to give you a, a good clear out and you know make you feel a lot better in yourself. Each morning, spend 30 minutes maybe reviewing and reflecting the previous day. So when you wake up in the morning, come down, have your breakfast, maybe while you're having breakfast and you're talking, start to review and reflect on what you've done. Keep a journal, just bullet point notes of things that have happened the previous day by obviously reviewing what's happened there, reflecting, and actually planning for the day ahead. And that really sort of helps you build and focus on what you want to achieve that day. I try to read two or three books per month. And again, that will vary depending on what my lifestyle is actually doing that month. But if I can't read you know, two or three books, I will certainly try to read for 20 or 30 minutes per day. And it might not necessarily be a novel or an in-depth book. It could be something quite light-hearted. It could be something to do with what I do within my business. It could be something around the industry that I work within. So at the same time, I'm learning something new. And our body and our minds need to learn something new. The more we learn, the better we become, the more motivated and inspired that we are. I find listening to audiobooks a great way to pass the time. I spend a lot of time in the car driving from meeting to meeting, from place to place. So rather than listening to the radio or music, and again, there's no problems with doing this, it's good to have that mix of different things. But I'll spend time listening to an audio book. I'll download the audio book onto my mobile device, being an iPhone, uh, using iTunes, and when I'm actually travelling, I'll actually listen to that. And that will inspire me. I listen to things that I want to learn from, I want to be educated by, I want to follow and be passionate about. So a lot of the things I listen to are about business and business management and people have succeeded, biographies, people that have gone out there and done you know, a challenge and succeeded from it. And you'll be amazed the amount you can pick up from that. You'll be amazed that when you go into that meeting how inspired you, you can be and how much more motivated and lifted you will be when you actually walk into that meeting with your customer or your supplier. And there's some fantastic audio books out there. I also find taking a walk each day is brilliant. I have a small puppy, Springer Spaniel, and we like to take him out each evening for a 20 to 30 minute walk. 
and we go through the fields and through the forests and it's a chance for him to exercise but it's also a chance for myself and my partner to actually talk and discuss and review and think um, and think about what we want to do and sometimes that walk will be on my own and that will be my time to, for me to think and for me to discover and for me to plan and for me to think about the tasks and the challenges and absolutely the successes ahead of me. Try and spend maybe one day per week doing things with your friends, your family. Put work to one side, leave it alone. And then spend that day that you've planned, whether it's a day at the theme park, it could be a day out for walks, it could be a picnic, it could be you know, to the cinema or bowling. But do something and enjoy that time that you have, because you don't know how much time that you do have left. I find taking a massage or a spa day uh, once every month or two is fantastic. It's a great way to re uh, regenerate and it's a great way to relax. Um, and again, during that time, you're not thinking about anything. You are just very relaxed um, and you know, really just chilling for that period of time. So it's a great way to feel better in yourself. I find in the evenings, I mentioned about writing a journal in the morning and reviewing and reflecting. I find that just in the evening for five, ten minutes, I like to just jot down some bullet points that I've achieved that day. Um, I will set my goals and my challenges at the beginning of a week um, and I'll plan for that. And it's great to actually just reflect over those and have I actually ticked any of those off on a daily basis. It's a great place to note down the successes you've had that day. Or little mental notes, notes to self, things that you might want to look back at in a week's time, six months' time, even three or four years' time, to pick up and review what you actually did when that circumstance happened. So I use a Sunday evening, half an hour to an hour, and I will actually sit down and just quickly plan, very bullet point, my week ahead. I will set myself five challenges or five goals for that week and I'll take those five goals and I will break them down into five individual goals so what I will try and do is actually have five achievements or goals that I want to achieve on a daily basis and five major goals for that week so each day I work to uh, achieving the five small goals and I'll achieve one of those goals for my week to give me five goals for the week I also once a month actually work from home. Um, during this time I'm actually working on myself, planning, personally developing myself and I will actually review my position in the office and the work that I'm doing in the office and see if there's anything from personally and work related that I can tie together and I will start looking at my goals and my achievements and planning how I want to move things forward in the next month, the next three months, six months, twelve months and even five and ten years because all the time I'm adjusting my plan of my life. Exercise is really really important. I try to exercise at least once a day. I'm not great at it, I wish I could have more time to spend more time doing exercise and this is something I'm working towards and developing on a daily basis. But exercise certainly not only works the body but also works the mind you will feel much more revitalised, you will feel healthier, you will feel you can go out and any challenge doesn't become a challenge, any challenge you can succeed at. So work towards that exercise. I want to increase my exercise to an hour per day. Try maybe once a week taking your watch off, leaving it at home. A Sunday is a great day to do this. A Sunday you know, can be that family day. Maybe when you're doing that family day you can leave your watch behind. That way you're actually ruling the day and time is not ruling you. It, it really works. It just makes you mellow a little bit more. It makes you feel more comfortable. Um, you're not looking at your watch, clock watching you know, every minute or every second that passes. I also found one of the final things that really, really worked for me is writing a bucket list or 101 things to do before you die. And this is a list with... In my case, 101 different things I want to achieve between now and the day that I die. These could be anything from travelling to doing very, very small things that mean a lot to you. And you can share this list. You can actually write this list with your partner. I actually did with my partner. We sat down and we put some things on the list together. They're things that we want to do together. But it also includes a number of things that I want to achieve personally. So... Create that list, 
you will keep amending it because you'll cross things off. And don't just because you've crossed it off think that's it. Replace it with something new. Work towards a new achievement. So, just to recap very, very quickly. Remember, when you write something down, you are a thousand times more likely to achieve your goals. So, work on a plan. Work on that business plan. Work on that personal plan. Write it down. Create your goals. When you create your goals, write down your achievements. They're far more important. What you succeed at, you want to share with people. You want to not so much shout about it. You don't want to become big-headed, but certainly share. People will talk to you and people will embrace in your success. All these goals that I've set, you know, these personal things that I've done over time, they didn't happen overnight. If you're going to take one thing away from this and study it and work towards it, you need to allow it to become a habit. And to become a habit, you must do it for a minimum of 21 days. There's no point in saying, I'm going to get up early tomorrow, do it once, but then stop doing it. it. You'll find it just as hard for 21 days. But once you break that magic number of 21, you'll find it will become embedded. You'll become a habit. You'll do it naturally. You'll wake naturally in the morning. Once you do something more than 21 times, it becomes a habit. Once it's a habit, it's embedded within you. Remember, small steps each day will create the end goal. So break down a goal that you want to achieve. Break it down into bite-sized chunks. For those of you who have read the book, Eat That Frog. Break it down into small parts and work at achieving it bit by bit. And eventually you will reach that end goal. If you have a bad day, don't kick yourself. Don't say, that's it, I'm not doing it anymore. That's not a problem. Get back up and start working towards those smaller goals and achieving that great goal. Remember, if you're not... If people are not laughing at you because of your dreams, then you're not dreaming big enough. So the likes of you know, famous people from the past, great inventors, people would laugh at them. People thought they were mad. But did they care? No. They kept on working towards their dream and they achieved it. And they proved all these people that were laughing about them and at them wrong. And finally... To take away, don't be a prisoner of your past. Be an architect of your future. The future is unyet written, and you can do whatever you want to do with it. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you'll take maybe one or two things away from what I've spoken to you about. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you.